Ladies and none of a damn, everyone's favorite <laughs> Caribbean girl, Nade! Hey! Nade Bats, everyone. Hey. Hello, Nadia. How are you? I am good. I am good. I'm good. I'm, let me make sure my lighting is good, too. Yeah. All I'm right. Sure make sure I'm not too is... dark. Put up this. Yeah. Sweet. This is long overdue. This is long overdue. Because yeah, you're you too busy, 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 you miss busy body 2020, <laughs> 2021. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, could you call my management and book his management for management to oh, make sure this thing gosh. happens? So no, shout no. out to Ico. Shout out to Ico for putting this together. <laughs> yes, yes. Brilliant. Yes, yes. yes. Big up to Ico. <laughs> so I was thinking long and hard because, Nadia, I don't know if you ever caught a glimpse of what I do. I started this show back in 2020 during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I'm accustomed to doing interviews backstage right. in a party, right? catching you running off a stage or on stage, you know, and always getting like a minute or two to ask the yes. quickest questions I could ask ever. Yes. Mm -hmm. And normally in my show, I'll try to have two guests, sometimes more, and, and mix things up and have the guests talk to each other. One artist, like a veteran, talk to a newbie. Right. And I decided after thinking long and hard that, you know what, I don't get to have proper conversations when I do that. So, right. which is why with you, you know, I wanted to do it one on one and, and have... Right. I don't want to be rushing like, oh, we have a next person in 20 minutes, so we need to end yeah, this clock. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> just really talk and not feel rushed for the first time. Right. Like, not feel rushed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, sure, you know, I have sure. my jungle juice in my cup. Oh, man, I need a and drink. You didn't, you weren't prepared, <laughs> weren't you? I need a drink. <laughs> you need a drink. You need a drink. Um, you mean, uh, should I message Ico and tell him to yes, tell send somebody to send somebody? <laughs> <laughs> so oh we could start goodness. this conversation in so many different ways. Yes. I want to, what I was doing when I was doing my research, mm -hmm. something, I saw one thing that really surprised me that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if much people haven't heard this in any interviews, but you were a part of a group that performed mm -hmm. in party time. Mm -hmm. I don't know where y'all placed or how well y'all did, but we won. You were, you won. We won. I was, yeah, I was part of a, a group called Silhouette. Silhouette. Won. Yeah, we won party time. Yeah. That's 19. insane. And doing an Envoke yes. track or something, huh? We did, um, it was it Envoke with the remake of, um, it was an Envoke remake, remake of, of Beatles of, of or something Beatles, like that. Of a Beatles uh, track, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> when did it, it didn't start for you in Soka, did it? So did it start in Soka and you ended there? No. No, and it didn't even start on party time. So my uh, musical journey started actually like in primary school because I went to I went to a Trinidad Muslim League, which is a, a Muslim school here. Yeah, which is a Muslim school here. So my actual first exposure to singing um, was um, doing uh, casitas. And for those of you who don't know, that's like, well, you're singing Arabic, it's like Muslim ballads. That yeah. was my first exposure to singing. Um, and that was in primary school. And then I went to secondary school and I started to do like um, R&B and pop. And, um, and when we won party time, actually, that's when we got the group of the exposure. And a lot of soca artists started calling and asking us to come and sing background vocals for them. Right. So, and at that time, we were just working with all the greats, Marshall, the, the Destra, the KMC, you know. Everybody was calling us because um, we were like a harmonizing group. So right. That is where my that's where I was introduced to soca because all of the artists that I would work with, everybody would just be like, but why you don't sing soca like you know all you should be singing soca and we did we actually put out a soca yeah i yeah. feel like in trinidad is always a pressure to just come down to soca at some point you could want to be the biggest rock star in the trinidad and they're going to tell you uh -huh. so why do you sing soca i know you love I I, you should be in soca <laughs> i think it's just because a lot of time you see the thing is how we grew up in trinidad we were exposed to so many different types of music and yeah. um, 
So people people would just, whatever they gravitated to is what they felt as though they should sing. And truth be told, a lot of a lot of us weren't encouraged to sing soca at that time. Everybody was okay. trying to do something else. You right. know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I wouldn't say it came down to soca. It went up to soca, Andre. Come on. Okay. We went up. <laughs> Point, point taken. <laughs> point taken. Right? You went, so, you went, yeah. Yes, you went was, from being lost to finding the motherland. Yeah. The and, and, land. The thing, and the thing about this is, it's like, the thing about this is, is, even I at the time, I was like, yeah, cool, I'll try it. You know what I mean? Um, because like I said, at that time, everybody was just like, you want to sing record B? <laughs> you want to sing R and B? And you know, that's what we were fed. I want to be the so, next Whitney Houston. Yeah, you want to be next yeah. Whitney Houston? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, but that's just not how it turned out. You know. Wow. So, yeah. party time, and funny enough, so you. You all weren't singing soca there, then people started to say, come and write or sing background vocals, right? Background vocals. Background Why is vocals, it if you yeah. then you were the winner of a show that's the main entertainment scout for finding talent at the time? I'm surprised mm -hmm. that how doesn't someone just come and say, Why don't you just come and be the lead singer for our group? How is it you have to now come and background vocals? Isn't that like a step no, down? Uh, there's no there's nothing wrong with it. We were now start with, we were kids, we were literally 40 True. years old. So yeah. it's like you have to start somewhere, you know, it's not all. and the thing about it is too, like I said, we were a harmonizing group. So everybody was like, Oh my gosh, these girls are sound real good. We could put them on some on some tracks. And like I, yeah. I and to give credit to a lot of the artists that I worked with, most of them were the ones who encouraged me to start singing soca. I remember right. um at like 16 years old, KMC was the one of the first artists, producers who was like nads, I really like your voice. And every rhythm KMC had, he would stick me on the rhythm too. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, they wouldn't play me. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I was on it. You and from the time I mean? you came out into that in the soca scene, you were always Nadia Batson? Yeah, so the, the, uh, no, it was Silhouette at first. That was the group. Okay, so um, you're stuck our, with Silhouettes initially. Yeah, so we had, yeah, we had Silhouettes and then, um, and then people really was introduced to Nadia Batson like in 2006 when I sang One Island. Right. Yeah. So One Island was before Caribbean Girl, huh? Yes, it was. Caribbean Girls 2007, um, as well as uh, My Land with Kess. Right, 2007. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when, so at, at what point did you guys decide, okay, Silhouettes, no longer? And are the other girls uh, in right that group, are they still doing soccer and stuff? No, 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 no. They just, they stopped. You still keep in touch with them? Yeah, of course. Of course, of course, of course. And why did we they, how, how come they abandoned the, the promised land? <laughs> like, like, life happens. At the end of the day, that happens to a lot of groups too, you know. Yeah. And like I said, we we used to be singing like heavy R&B and pop. And so we did have like that one soca song in the, in the year 2000. We actually right. had two songs. <laughs> right? <laughs> one, which a lot of people didn't even realize that I sang was Yaga Ye, Yaga Yo, Yaga Yaga Ye. That is so as well as on a link up um chinese born journey they had this rhythm i think it's actually called the link up rhythm um 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 i can't remember but yes we did have two songs at the time it is so funny because a part of this show and i was i i, I was trying to get my hair done for you now <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was running late so a part of the show was and i'm gonna eventually get around to this is when artists like you or any artists who have like a catalog of music, I yeah. want to do what I saw. I think BBC in the UK, one, they do it. They run piece uh -huh. of tracks, like old songs. Oh my and they'll God, make it finish the lyrics. No, do you remember the lyrics of every song you've sang off the top of your head? No, no. Dude, dude, I don't even remember lyrics to the song I sang yesterday. Like, dude, I No, but for just... real. It's a lot. So it's like sometimes I really don't. Hear what? For me... I remember there was this one, there was this one time I performed, um, and I think I had this in Caribbean girl, but this was just, and this was recently, probably like yeah. just a few years ago. 
And I am mixing up the first verse with the second verse, and oh my gosh, listen. Because I have, I have a lot of songs. You do, Sometimes and you I'm going to start that segment as part of my show. It's like mandatory. I'm going to put artists to the test. Be like, right, I'm just going to so, play secret and girl and be like, finish the lyrics. I'll be getting away from that today. <laughs> you, you clearly <laughs> got away. You got away. You got away. <laughs> I because no, I, I always think about that. I'm thinking someone you know like yourself or any artist who has more than 25 songs. How do you remember right. stuff from 20 2006 yeah. word for word? Yeah, and Sometimes you forget, but then, but then. Like I, 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 I work so much that, you know, it's not like if it's going to be, you know, that far back in memory because it sounds like it, unless you've taken it out of your set and you just don't do them anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because once they're in your set, you'll be performing it regularly yeah, enough to be on perform- point. Yeah. You'll be on point. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say was, so, okay. This uh, I was thinking about this too, right? So you used to write a lot and you wrote... It's funny, you wrote stuff for Michelle Sylvester, mm-hmm. right? Now, mm-hmm. I was reading that name and I'm thinking that name means something because she used to win wrote, um, like Soka Monarch and thing back in the day. Yeah, so right? she won uh, the first groovy Soka Monarch. Uh, that was in 2005. She won. And you penned the song? Yes, Sleeping in Correct. My Bed. Mm-hmm. How does it feel when you... I, 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 I'm just trying to get a gauge. Like, so I don't even know if Michelle is still involved in Soka, if she's... Press, she's, it, so a, she she's, she's a gospel artist now. Okay. Yeah, but she still um, she still sings very much so. Right. Because I was thinking, you know, how do you feel when you pen for people and they were like the big names back then and now you don't mm-hmm. hear about some of the names that you used to actually write for and now you actually, mm-hmm. your name is now bigger than the names of people that you actually wrote for back in the day. A, a couple well, artists as well. The thing about it is, Andre, I don't look at things like that, like bigger and smaller. And yeah, we ha- everybody has a particular journey. You know what I right. mean? So I agree. at that time, now I wear many, many caps and I give every single one of those caps the same amount of respect. So right. as a songwriter, I wear that cap and I can completely compartmentalize and differentiate, okay, this is Nadia the artist, this is Nadia the writer, this is Nadia the band leader, and they all have different responsibilities. When I give someone a song, like I write a song for someone, you know, other people would be like, but Nads, why you give away that why song? You, away? Like, yeah, da, da, da. Yeah. you know what I mean? People don't understand. Some of the greatest writers are also artists themselves. Neo, who is someone who I just completely admire. When you when you hear his his catalog of, of hits that he's written, you're like, yeah. wait, what? But it's a completely different cap that you wear. Michelle at that time was doing her thing in Soka and Michelle is so fantastic and she's such a natural on stage and we are friends too, you know, so nice, yeah. and of course I was rooting for her at that, at that time is a situation where it's like, we were all just like a, a little group and we would do, when I say a group, a group of friends that would just yeah. want to see each other win kind of thing. So that's why I said, when you say now that my name is, I wouldn't say that. I would say that this is my the point in my journey where it's like I am elevating. You know what I mean? Yeah. To to you know everybody and 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 Nisha still very much does her thing too. You know she she still sings because she's an assassin on stage. She's so good, so she natural. She is. You know what I mean? So and she's doing her thing in gospel. Yeah, and and yeah. speaking about you know what you mentioned about where you are, where you are at that point in time in your life and your career and what you do right. and I, I probably shed a tear and i believe the year was 2011 when you decided to no longer be a part of your journey with kesty band because that right. those years were my wonder years like i loved kesty band i still love kesty band but when nadia when that female touch and an all male band right, right it was you brought something special which you didn't <laughs> have you know when you ran on stage and did your piece it was way and then yeah, you moved yeah, on, yeah. you know. But tell tell me or tell us about how important was that those years with Casty Band? What did that do for you yeah, as a well, you know in the, in, as a person in the in the art form? Well, I'm big up to Casty Band. I always I always give them a lot of credit because they just they just moved on from um from Image and Company, yeah. and. Uh, Kess and I, well, I knew, I knew them. For, we all were friends from years before. So when they moved on, I was just kind of like a natural choice for them because yeah, it's like yeah. we all know Nadi. All of us are friends from since whenever. So just ask Nadi to come and say, I don't know if she'll work. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, all right, cool. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. 
And I was just in those formative years of, of Kesty Ban where we didn't even have a full set for us in terms of even collectively between Kess and I, we couldn't even do like an hour set. We had to do covers from other artists because we wow. didn't have we didn't have Yeah, we're like, still you know, building your own repertoire. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have like a plethora of songs. So so to see where where they are now it's like it just it's just insane to me um but just again back to your question it feels it always felt really really good i always had a, a strong foundation and cushioning there with with kesley band it yeah. always felt like home um even now like when i when i perform with kesley band for their concerts no it's like we just just tell you know, right that's, back. That's fam. That's fam. Yeah, that's family. So we all when we when I'm on stage with them, it's like that's my brothers, you know. Um, and we've maintained a really good relationship. Right. So you decided to move on and form SAS, SAS Nation. Mm-hmm. SAS, SAS, the band yeah, SAS, SAS Nation. So it's Nadia Batson with SAS. That's the with official SAS, name. Right? But some people say SAS Nation, some people say SAS the band. Once they say SAS, I'm good. Once they say <laughs> SAS. Why, why, first of all, why, did, why, why y'all went with the word SAS? I say SS, right? Because it's real dope. Because it's like a way of uh, people were thinking that we, we mean sassy, like. Yeah, we kind of, you know, we kind of do. <laughs> uh, we were just kind of throwing out names at the time, all of us. And I was like, because we couldn't find a name for this band. I was like, oh Lord. And then um, one of us, I don't even remember, somebody said sassy. And my keyboardist said, no, sass. I think that's, I think like people think they have a, they have a lot of sass. And then, that was it. We just <laughs> went for that. We just sass went for that. And, and why, why are all, f- what was the decision to make it all female at the time? At the time, um, I wanted to showcase female musicianship um, because I felt like people would always, it would al- almost seem as though female musicians in the Caribbean was like a myth. I remember <laughs> when I said I was going to do, when I said I was going to have an all female band. Yeah. Everybody was asking me, but were you going to find a, a female drummer? Or we yeah, we're going to a drummer. Who could be the bass man? <laughs> A bassist. Were you gonna find a bassist? And they came. They came. And I kept saying there was no at that time there was no platform for female musicians in soca. Um right. you would get probably like some musicians maybe in church if you go to maybe like um you know like how island club those casinos and things that have like little groups and you may find uh, um uh, a female keyboard is here or you know but in yeah. terms of like a real platform there was none available so i was like well let me just be the one to create that wow and yeah. how long did it take you to find everybody you know what not long at all because really because of the no not long i had one day of auditions one and uh, i think i got the best female musicians in um in Trinidad and tobago hands down and um because they're not many they all knew each other <laughs> so it's like yeah, Everybody I feel like you broke then, up some rock groups or something to form this band. Like one person was in some rock band, one girl no, was playing no, for no, some no, R and B no, band, no, no. and all of a sudden bands say, no. "Wait, what, what happened?" They say, "Boy, we're gonna go no. with Natty boy." No, no, <laughs> Natty, no, no, no. we no, gone. I was just so excited. I was just so excited. Um, I think we've now we've now because we plan on expanding. I'm still trying to get one more keyboardist. Uh, the band may soon have to become a majority female band if I don't get what yeah. i want but because i but, thought i did um, see i did see a guy in one of the videos recently huh yeah 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 because i right. want to i want to incorporate a few more more musicians yeah but if i can't get if i can't get female we'll just be majority female that's fine with me too as long yeah. as they have a platform you know yeah did you do you find that the or female band was an advantage or a disadvantage as far as getting jobs and doing things and within trinidad and then the region I think, hmm. So in the beginning, everybody was just real excited because they were like, yeah. oh, you're a man, what? Right. So, um, <laughs> um, we launched, it was such a successful launch. The place ram. I didn't even know because we had like, we invited a few people. We had it down at, um, in Anchorage. Andre, mm-hmm. the place packed like it's a full fit. Like, were you there? Weren't you there for that? I, it was I, like, yeah. packed 
to capacity. Um, we don't know how the top just went up. We don't know how it, uh, the place was just packed. Um, and I think everybody thought that maybe when you hear all female band, you're thinking they're going to be all gentle and da, 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 and they were like, no, these women are hard. Like, let me go title, you know, and that made it even more exciting. You right. know what I mean? But then, so I was at the beginning. And then maybe like two, three years after that, we weren't getting as much work as we, we used to get because I guess the whole excitement of it all being all female yeah. was gone. Not to mention, just overall in Trinidad, um, bands on the whole weren't getting as much work as before because we started kind of now. Do you remember the years when, because when we were growing up, it was more about the band. It was yeah. more about, um, you know, uh, ecstatic. And they would you have, have to have a band before. if you were in the game. You had yeah. to have a band. And, and then, you know, Brass when, Fest and PSD. Yeah. Right. And then somewhere along the line, it kind of just switched to the front line. Yeah. So a lot of bands weren't getting a lot of work too. So we kind of just fell way back down on the food chain just in terms of, because huge bands weren't getting, <laughs> weren't getting work. So far less for us. But... We just kept working and kept working and kept working until, you know, we kind of just ma made enough noise that people started saying, no, 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 we have to have SAS. SAS. You know what I mean? Yeah, we just kept working. The good thing is, too, because I had a lot of young musicians who were just very, very eager, enthusiastic. They had no real expectation. So there was no disappointment. If you understand what I'm saying, there was nothing. Right. It wasn't a situation. They just understood, okay, we had to work, we had to work. No, if we yeah, get we have jobs, plenty of work we and get it. Push. If we don't, we don't, but we push in. You know what I mean? And they still very much have that mentality, you know? Right. So, because this year is actually going to be our 10-year anniversary. Look how time is flying, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, Yay. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I we, we, as you touched on that topic there, I wanted to talk, like, go a little bit deeper, where we spoke about mm -hmm. the bands. It mm -hmm. used to be huge. It used to be, you had, you know, Adla Ronnie McIntosh and, um, was it's Atlantic? No, he was, um, he was, Ronnie McIntosh was with Chandelier. Was Chandelier. It? So you had Chandelier, mm -hmm. Atlantic, and go on, go on, go on, right? Traffic, and all these different yeah. bands. Mm -hmm. Do you think, from your point of view, that the bands went away because the industry evolved and when i say evolved i mean a lot of the things with the bands to me bands were singing a lot of instructional music right. and i think today we're not about the instructional music as much as back in those right. days before people wanted to be say all right everybody we're gonna jump 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 okay put your hand, right hand in the air left hand in the air and it came to a point where i think you know we were in some fat back in our wednesday or something and the people decided that you know what i don't want the artist telling me when to jump or wave anymore like, i will jump and wave when i feel i get that energy when mm -hmm. I get the vibes and the vibe, I will jump and wave. So don't tell me, don't give me the instruction no more. <laughs> do you think the bands went away because of somewhat of that? Or you think it's another reason where the industry just, you know, promoters wanted to cut costs and yeah, band work were, were doing too much, you know, the next thing to back then, a lot of bands did covers, right? It was some of their songs, but it was right. everybody else's music. Maybe be right. beyond the aesthetic, every other right. band was touching everybody else's music. Right. And I hated right. that. I kept telling, I, pre I preach for so many years, I keep telling the bands, I know you want to be a cover band, but if you really want to make it and have longevity in this game, start doing only your own music. Follow the right. bands that are only doing their tracks. And Kess started doing that for a minute. And he would, as I said, he didn't start with a lot, but look where they are today. But yeah, Kess, yeah. I mean, coming from an imaging company, which is a cover band, Kess decided, you know what? No, I want to cut. And I, you know, I grew on, they went Kess the band. So what do you think it is? Is it the, we are good instructions or is it promoters wanted to be cheap? Did the band just go away? <laughs> I think the number of factors that came into play. Um, yes, money, of course. Um, that that played a huge part in it, in just terms of the, the cost. Um, but I also feel as like the marketing, because before, like I said, you used to have to market your whole band. I remember watching Ecstatic do music farm video and it's the entire, like the whole band. Like yeah, you could be walking yeah. down the road and everybody know, hey, look, Joey, and look, this one, and da da da, -da. Yeah. So you knew the entire band. When it shifted, it just became frontline. 
front and line. obviously if you start marketing just the front line that's who people are gonna know that's who people want to see now there's no you cannot replicate um a live band feel so that mm. wave where we that we went through where we weren't having many bands on stage used to drive me up a wall because i used to be like yo man i don't understand how are we fetting on track with tracks Right. You know what I mean? It just didn't feel right. And that yeah, I think yeah. that's the reason why now it's like no, it has no, it's now slowly moving back to bands. We need to have, you know, live bands. To touch on the point that you made just now, too, with respect to singing your own music. Um when you're building a repertoire, if you have to perform for an hour, it's, it's just like what I was telling you when Kess and I first started. We probably had I <laughs> yo, listen. <laughs> We could uh, we didn't have enough hits to do a whole set. So sometimes yeah. you have to do covers because right. if your contract says you have to perform for whale and sing, you know what I mean? If your yeah. contract you have to perform for an hour and collectively just and you have 45 between, minutes for you. <laughs> the two of us, we, we only cover in half an hour. We had a stick in other songs until yeah. you build your repertoire. So so now is a situation and as a matter of fact. That's what happened um, at the end of my my time with Kess. We had started building our repertoire so much that we couldn't. It didn't make sense for us to try to share a one hour space because it, it is Kess the band. So yeah. and but Nadi, I couldn't sing all of my songs, obviously. So then when I get off stage, people are like, "Yeah, they sing it, young girl," <laughs> and yeah, they sing it, and it's because we have the time. Yeah. Right, so you have to cut your so, stuff so now I, to accommodate right. their excess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a number of factors that um that kind of come into play with us. So I'm happy to see everybody now kind of back on that whole band sound and feel and yeah, that's good. That's that's the vibes there. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely. So yeah, I never even thought about that. Where you just grew your catalog so much that yeah, you had to cut songs so that they had their catalog and then it was just yeah. naturally it to came to the point where yeah, you have to perform songs. all your music, you have to do it separately. We couldn't. We couldn't. Yeah. We couldn't. Yeah. I never thought about that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay. So mm -hmm. I I you know it's weird. I haven't I was looking for your bio and the only bio I could find on the internet. Was on trinijunglejuice.com. So I was like, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have a, we have Nadia's bio, and this was probably written in 2004 or five, somewhere out there. But the first paragraph, and I need to pull this thing up because the first paragraph was like epic. Whoever wrote that needs to get a first of all, they need to get a prize. So <laughs> you, I don't even know if you know who wrote it, but let me just grab this thing real quick while I'm here. Yeah. I don't even it. know what that is. Yeah, I was saying you won't even know, but as I read it, you're gonna say, Oh, let me find this. <laughs> so I should have this page already up, but I don't. Um, one minute. Here we go. This is insane. So I started reading, and I'm thinking, wow, this is some good stuff. But I want to read the first paragraph and then talk about a point in this thing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> do, 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 do. As soon as I could get to... I need to talk to my IT department. This, this Trinity Jungle Juice website is very slow. <laughs> Come on now. Shame. Uh, okay, Nadia. There we go. Artist profiles. I know. I know. I should be doing a share screen, but let's not. I'll just read it. So, if I is Nadia. Buh, 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 buh. There we go. Oh, you should see this picture here. You look. Like you have milk in your face. Oh All right. So, it says right. I'm gonna. Re I'm reading the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. In a world where the majority of emerging female artists tend to play on their sexuality oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> or ride a wave of controversy all the way to the bank, it is rare to find true talent in its raw, uncut form, but this scarcity does exist. For a prime example of a diva in the making, <laughs> you need to look no further than the oh sultry gosh. singing sensation, Nadia Batson. Nadia Who Batson. wrote that? <laughs> Who wrote that? that? Luke. That is like so excellent. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll have to double check that, but um, but I actually remember that. Yeah, you remember that. So that's I the only bio. It. It's on our website. It's it, as I said, it was written back in the day when you were writing for Michelle and stuff, Sylvester. Right, right, and, right. And right. so let's talk about this thing, right? So you, mm -hmm. the the Nadia Batson 
that statement says who Nadia was. And then to me, the Nadia about since a day, sugar daddy right. and, and fats and this and that. People right. love the Nadia. And Nadia is now, as he, I saw you asked in an interview, it might have been Destro. You say, listen, Art, do you consider yourself a sex symbol or yeah. a sex cycle? So Nadia <laughs> yeah, Batson, do you yellow consider yellow yourself TV. in 2021 a sex symbol? I may not, but the guy do. And that's <laughs> what's important. So, yeah. The thing is, right? Okay, so I never, and I still don't, if I'm being honest, I don't like harp on sexuality a lot in terms right. of like physically and yeah. i'm still i'm still for like <laughs> like all my friends know this be like you actually whine on stage what and, <laughs> and if you look at me perform like even when i'm performing fat off if i get two seconds and whine here take that and run with it because I, right. you're not gonna get a lot you're not gonna get a lot and the thing about it is there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all because i always right. tell people it takes all types to make up this world. And I appreciate everybody's talent and how how they harness it, right? For me, I just always wanted, at that time, I always wanted my writing and vocal skills to shine even more. Um, right. Now, this part of my journey, I completely understand the importance of being well-rounded. I didn't place yeah. enough emphasis before, like on performance and image and... Um, and all of these things, and I wasn't alone in that. I think all of us were kind of guilty of that back in the day. Like Patrice and I were saying, oh gosh, girl, if I could go back and delete, go through Facebook and delete every single old picture, I would, because we're looking at hummus. Yeah. But, but it's just evolution to, you know, as everybody, everybody grows. And the industry at that time was in its teething stages. So you'll find that we weren't paying attention to those things. I yeah. I certainly didn't understand. Um, I didn't understand stage. I didn't understand image. I didn't understand. I I just didn't. No, right. no. You'll tend to get a, a well-rounded artist who would pay attention to every single you know department that is necessary yeah. to make up you know an artist. But yeah, I didn't. I used to study sexuality and and <laughs> no, I just get him a little thing. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't gonna jump out myself hundred percent. Where you'll get a little sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> oh you're damn gosh. right. You're damn right. No, and I and I love that because that leads. I mean, that makes me just think as you're talking. If as an artist, when you come out, you focus on to me the technical or the key aspects, which is raw talent. How to take your raw talent and fine tune it to be the perfect engine you know yeah so you yeah. had the talent to write you were producing your backs you know singing background vocals you came to the front you started singing on your own mm -hmm. and you said you know what let me leave this whole i'm trying to push this sexy thing and vibe and you know my name yeah. is hot stuff because some of these young girls or female artists they come out pushing mm -hmm. the sexuality so hard that the talent mm -hmm. so behind that right. it doesn't take long before the the people say you know what this person are talented they look right. good but yeah. they have nothing else to back it. But they have nothing else to back it. So, so I, fortunately, I, yeah. fortunately, no, I think because of the groundwork that was made by artists before, and even even uh, management before, anybody who is in charge of certain things, they they are coming into the game now understanding understanding things that we didn't information we didn't have privy to. Like, yeah. so, and another thing too, Andre, I feel a lot of times people don't understand you have to give artists enough time to figure themselves out. Right. Like, even if somebody comes in and they, they happen out on sexuality, it's okay. Allow yeah. them to. Because right. what tends to happen is they'll get it. Like, they'll start understanding, understanding, okay, I could pull back here, I need to work on this, I need to, you know. But we just live in a society now where it's like from the moment somebody comes out, if we don't... Yeah, you have to give artists time. If even me, when I look back now at my performances like ten years ago, I am like a yeah. completely different artist. I don't True. look the same. I don't perform the same. I don't sing the same. Nothing. Wow. This is actually this is actually something I never spoke about before in terms of um, like with my singing and all of that. I remember in the beginning of my career. People used to love Nadi. I have a bubbly, bubbly personality. Everybody liked Nadi. They like my writing. I already I always had like a very flowery, um, fertile you know, imagination. Yeah. So I would write a particular way. They love that. 
but I always felt as though something was kind of holding me back. So my management and I, we sat down and we were like, what's the but? Because you would get a love Natty but. And we had to figure out, what's the but? Right. The but, the but at that time was, oh, God, I love Natty, but she's singing too high. Oh, my God, this cute voice is just be piercing. It's so high. Really? We, used to get, we used to get that a lot. Wow. And so for that reason, we, that's what I'm saying, allow artists to go through what they have to go through. Because what, would ha- what happened at that point is we decided, hey, okay, well, let's start singing in lower keys. When I'm performing yeah. on stage, try not to show too much. You're going to end up getting too itchy or things like that. Things like that is what would help develop. Uh, um, develop an artist, you know. So everybody has their everybody has their journey, and everybody has you know their own road to, to yeah. To and, and 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 great great advice there because yeah, you're right. There are artists that I know who came out on the sex, pushing sexuality and found their way. They now they found, they realizing find, I need to do more than find, that. And, and yeah, yeah, you're right. You're gonna find your way. You're gonna find your way. I I like I said, I was I I am like a completely different artist. Like, and this is the reason why some people, even after so long, I, I have new, brand new fans. Like, yeah. no, <laughs> you know, because it's a situation where I just looked at everything. Like, you know, like you were saying before, I didn't used to take on sexuality, but you had to have a little bit. Yeah. And I didn't used to have none. Things like that, you know, just being able to fine tune things as you go along, fine tune, fine tune, fine tune, and figure out who you are and what you want to represent, what you want to, was what, where you fit into this here, you know, like, what exactly it is you have to offer, that kind of thing, and then you're, they're going to figure it out, and that's, and that's True. okay, True. you know? I'm reading some of the comments as they're talking, and you're setting yourself up because so many people, they're gonna, they say they're going to start digging for your old videos and material. Because they yeah, want to see yeah, yeah. who is this, who is this person you're talking about back in the day that you want to delete. Yeah. They're like, I need to go look but at I some old say, no, 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 I didn't say, no, 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 I didn't say I want to delete. That's not what I said at all. I said that it's an evolution because you yeah. you started at one point and you're gonna you're gonna get to where you have to be. No, I right. delete that. That's foundation. That's 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 what I learned from. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You do um you do a, a talk show, Yellow Cow TV. Yellow Cow TV. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more yeah. about that project because I, I clearly I, I've watched some of it and I've seen some of the clips. You are a natural, I just want to use straight up shit talker. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, Nadia, here's the joke, right? It was a Marshall Monday backstage. I caught you when you were leaving to do an interview. Uh-huh. I take my, as I said, I always feel as if, hey, I don't want to kind of step in a certain zones, which might be a... Right. And st- I make artists uncomfortable, right? And I right. clearly remember this, clearly remember this. I started interviewing you. My brother came, who does he used to produce a lot of shows for us back then. And he started asking yeah. me to ask you questions when he just started asking you questions. And his question was, Nadia, do you think Caribbean men, sorry, yeah, Caribbean men, in particular Trinidadians, are more yeah. prone to cheating than men of the world? What and you looked at him and was like, what? Huh? And I said, Nadia, I apologize. He's been drinking. Let's just get this interview <laughs> back to Trini Jungle Juice. I'll talk about the, the concert. Right. But if I knew back then that you were a yellow cow TV type of shit talker, I would have let that run. I would have let that run. Go ahead. Let's get an answer, Nadia. Do you think Caribbean men are more prone to cheating than men of the world? Not at all. Not at all. Trinidad, I love you. I love you. I love you. The end. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just like. Are you you're like you're planning to run for politics at some point in time after the no, soca? But I really, I really am a shit talker. The thing about this is with Yellow Cow TV. So for those who don't know, Yellow Cow TV is my friend and I, um, um, Alicia, uh, Alana as well. She's uh, the drummer right. in my band. Um, we, that's just naturally us. So when they yeah. come here and we sit down at the table and we lie around drinking and laughing. I would laugh so much sometimes that my, be- listen, my belly would be hurting me. Alicia's her next like real like shit talk to, right? And I told her one day, I'm always, I'm always thinking about what's next too, right? That's why I'm always doing so many different things, always involved in some project or the other. Right. And uh, I said, Leash, you know, I think we should start a film this. Like, if you know how stupid we're there, 
let me just film it. And she was like, well, yeah, let me film it. That's how that started. That's just how it came about. And we were like, well, if they like it, they like it, they don't like it, well, I love it. Because people like shit talk. Yeah, they do. they do. You know what I mean? Korean people on the whole, they just like to laugh. And I am constantly laughing. Eh? That is the yeah. next thing. So I can make a joke out of every damn thing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Nichelle from France asked, why yellow cow, though? Yellow cow. And now there's no deep cerebral <laughs> reasoning behind yellow cow. Because people think when they hear yellow cow, they're like, oh, you only come up with yellow cow. Yeah. Listen, that is us drinking somebody high. I have a big yellow um rug um piece of film at first. And one of us said, Well, maybe we should have call it the yellow rug. <laughs> the yellow that. vlog. Yes, the yellow rug. I have a big rug, yellow, yellow rug. rug. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, not yellow rug. And I think it was George. I can't even remember. I call I can't even remember which one of yeah. us said. Oh, yellow cow. All of us are love. Yellow cow. Ha, ha, ha. And then I was it. hey. That's <laughs> real. That's just how Trinidad is. It starts something, huh? Just, hey, yellow, yellow rug, man. Nah, I ain't like that. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Yellow, like, cow? Mm. yellow cow? But that's something like something. When, some, when one of us said yellow cow, all of us started to laugh. And then I said, well, anybody ever see a yellow cow? And they were like, no. <laughs> and then I said, well, you never see nothing like it. Let me go. Yellow wow. cow is History. The end. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So what's the um I guess a key part of the show besides you know learning about the artists is to talk about on projects that like uh, recent projects and future projects. I know you have a concert coming up very, very soon virtually. Yes. Yes. So let the people know what have you been working on. I know you've been real busy. Real music come out and you can get on every platform. So share some of this information. Yes. So um, I wanted to make sure that I fed my fans um, going into Carnival 2021. Because see, this 2021 season, even though we actually have no Carnival, I just felt as though I can't call myself an artist and only want to have music come out because of Carnival. I felt right. like... I agree. I felt like that would have been a disservice to not only my, my fans, but to myself as well. So I was like, you know what? I'm still going to produce music i'm still gonna record and do what i can um i can't get wild because at the end of the day what we would usually make we clearly we, we can't make it so i can't just go spending money all of this but right. like i still had to make sure that i was there for the fans to make sure that they understood that we here you know i got you i'm not gonna just leave you hanging so when we decided to do to still do our home, which is my uh concert. Yeah, um, and I love that show by the way. I normally go to it. I went to I think the last yes, two, uh, but yes, I it's yes. up in by one, we only 101. Two. Yes. Um so this is our form three. Okay. Um it's called a Love Note Carnival, our form three. And of course, for obvious reasons, we had to do it to do a virtual show. Um so it's gonna be airing on cnc3 here for Trin, um, Trin begonians you could you could look at it on cnc3 at 8 p.m right. um, it's also going to be available for streaming on the music app um the music app. as well yes as well as my my youtube my youtube uh channel so channel. what we'll do i'll make sure and put all of the information on my instagram and facebook pages right on and the date itself. is february so, 3rd is it february 3rd that's this coming wednesday this coming Wednesday. And your, yeah. the art form is normally on a Wednesday, huh? It's always on a Wednesday. Yeah. Which is why. Very, yeah. very yeah, wicked. Yeah, yeah. And I laugh and they say, we can't go overboard. We have to produce music and do things and watch our budget. And yeah. here's Nadia running all over Port of Spain in a carnival <laughs> costume. <laughs> Palancing. <laughs> all for the fans. All for the fans. <laughs> for the fans. Oh, my if, gosh. So... I'm starting, I think my signature, I'm going to ask a signature question for this show, mm -hmm. for everybody that I interview. Uh -huh. And you're the first person to answer it. It's mm -hmm. not a hard question. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. What would Nadia Batson, 2021, what advice would you give to Nadia Batson, an 18-year-old Nadia Batson? Um, to, to be yourself, one. Right. Um, and also as cliche as it may sound, perfect your craft. Um, perfect your craft. Perfect your craft. Um, 
and just let her know that everything will be okay because you know when you now enter in um any new space it's yeah. like you know you start you you're not you're feeling as though you don't belong i remember in the beginning of of my career i was like oh lord how on earth do i really fit in here because i broke a lot of barriers coming into this thing yeah. um my voice wasn't the typical soca voice. I didn't have a typical soca look. I wasn't typical soca size. I wouldn't be. It was just it was just a lot of doors right. that I had to kick to kick down. Um, but I think I would definitely let her know that it's gonna pay off. It's going to pay off, and it's gonna pay off big time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Wicked. For sure. I've seen. I've seen, and I think I've heard. Walshie Fire to say this several times. If you're, mm -hmm. he said basically to paraphrase, if you're doing anything and mm -hmm. you're not willing to sacrifice 10 years of your life to get there, mm -hmm. you just yeah. need to not even start. You should not even start. And that's Don't. Right. You have to be willing. That's he said 10 right. years. You have to be willing to sacrifice a good 10 years. I think Gary Vee also says that. You're mm -hmm. not going to become overnight to. success. You have to put yeah. in the time. But if you put have it in, to. you will see the results. You will, you will, you will, you will. I shed many, many, many a tear. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. In this industry, many. My Nadia, it was um. Thank you, thank you for taking the time and let's making this happen eventually. I'm yes, sorry I had eventually. to have my juice by myself. <laughs> Next time I'll That's organize right, ahead of time. time. <laughs> I would like you to um to introduce. I have your your, your latest video, the um love note to carnival. Is it? Yes, it's called. I have it lined note. up to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, Travis Will, shout out Travis Will, who is still oh, playing yeah. his part in the carnival. Of course. So I'd like you to introduce the video and then we'll air it. And, and, and that's it. Like, thank you so much for joining. Yes, you're very, very welcome. Folks, this is a love note to carnival. It basically sums up how all of us are feeling right now. I know everybody loves the song so, 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 so much. Everybody, so the video have all in all your feelings. I get it. I get it. Big up to Travis. We're big up to everybody who made this happen. It was not um, an easy project to put together. The song to the video. Um, big up to NH Productions, Travis Will, yep. just everybody involved in it. Thank you so much. I love no carnival. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I swear, I don't know if any of us saw this coming. I did not. I did not think in my lifetime that I would see Trinidad and Tobago Carnival not happen. I, you know, it, it, years ago, I can't remember the last time, many years, 20, 30, 40 years ago, they had to postpone it. But it happened. Right now, we don't even know if 2021, if Trinidad Carnival is going to happen at all. And it's sad. Nobody saw this coming. We thought last year, you know what? We'll get past and things will be back to normal for 2021. And here we are in January. And, and things still isn't fully normal. When I made this t-shirt, I didn't think that it would still be relevant today. I thought I'd drop this last when last year, because come now, I thought we'd all be getting ready to go on the road. We're, you know, a week, two weeks away from Carnival. We'll be on the road and here we are. This still is relevant. This is insane. Peace, love and jungle juice.